There we go, so we're starting to delight. So, as Joe mentioned, touched on briefly, um, we sort of came across the definition of a gin there, and more specifically, a London dry gin. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be tasting six London dry gins. Um, all of them are at 40% ABV, and you're getting them doled out. And we're actually going to do it in three sets. So it's going to be a pair comparison that we're going to work through. So, straight off the bat, what is a London dry gin? We have three main points to cover. First of all, as Joe said, minimum bottling strength of 37.5% ABV for it to be a London dry gin. It also has to taste predominantly of juniper. And finally, all the flavour has to come from distillation. But that is actually the point that I am here to somewhat dispute today. Not so much of, of creating flavour, but actually what we can do to enhance it or change it before the um, final product goes into bottle. So let's have a look at what we can do, and hopefully by the end of this, um, I'm hoping to prove to you that actually we can influence flavour without going against um, the regulations. So, yeah, we've got six samples. So we're going to start off, we're going to do A and B together, then C and D, and then E and F. That's how we'll be going through this. Um, I should say that all of these are from the exact same distillation, so they are all the exact same gin base. So we've got no variables there in process. Um, they were all made on a 50 litre hybrid Holstein still back at the distillery. Um, and they have been distilled using very typical gin botanicals. So 12 gin botanicals that are all very common in gins have gone into this. Um, all the feedback I'm going to go through has come from the Warner Sensory Panel. So I'm going to talk you through the sort of tasty notes and any differences or similarities that the panel found in the samples. And at the end, I will be showing you um, some GC data. I promise I will use this eventually. Um, I'll be showing you some GC data, and then also I'll have a summary that shows you what, um, very kindly, 17 distilleries have chosen to anonymously share their processes with us. So we'll talk through these, and then we'll have a look at what some other people are doing and see if we can map that onto that. Um, I think pretty much everyone's got their samples now. So I will start the tasting. So the very first set that we're going to do, so this is sample A and B. So very much like as I'm going along, if you want to taste them, and I'll be talking about them sort of back and forth. Um, so we're going to be looking at resting time when it comes to London Dry. So again, this is you know a London Dry, it's been distilled, we've got it high strength, and what we're doing here is we're actually choosing at what time we choose to dilute it down to bottling strength. So there's no real guidance out there to distillers of exactly how to do this or even what they should be aiming for. It's very much everyone has their own way of doing it. And I know everyone swears by their own way of doing it. Um, but I'm here to show you that you know, maybe you might want to reconsider that. Um, and I do think as well it's very much dependent on the flavours you're trying to achieve at the end of the day. So there's no right way, wrong way at all. It's what you think is best for your spirit and what you're trying to achieve. So um, what we've looked at here, so sample A, the London dry gin has been diluted down on day 14. So it's sat at high strength for 14 days and then been diluted down to 40%. And sample B was diluted on the day of distillation. So absolutely no resting time. Oh, they're numbered. I'm going to go, yes, instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, I'm going to say one to six. Um, thank you for pointing that out. So... Yeah, I'll let everyone taste those there. So I'll talk through what the Warner's panel fed back, and then I'll try and make this a little bit interactive and ask you if you agree or disagree. Um, so sample one, the day 14 dilution. Overall, the panel found this one to be more complex, a lot higher intensity, more of that juniper earth, the angelica flavours coming through. Um, we got a lot more citrus, floral, just overall better rounded spirit is what they fed back on. Um, on the nose, on the palate, again, very similar, much more complex, much more intense. We found the spices particularly were shining through, slightly better finish. Um, we had things like pepper, nutmeg, cassia and cinnamon being picked out. It's been a lot more dominant in this one compared to sample two. Um, with a sample to yeah, the sort of fed back that all the elements were there, they could get out those gin flavours, it wasn't a completely different spirit, but it was just overall a little bit lacking, a little bit unbalanced, um, although they did note it was smoother on the palate, it was um, an interesting piece of feedback there, and Matthew, I have to apologise, they did say it was herbal, <laughs> we did use that as a descriptor. <laughs> But they did break it down a little bit more for me. So herb, oak, green, picking out certain botanicals like verbena, aniseed, things coming through. Um, overall, they had a preference for the first sample, so the one that was diluted after 14 days, um, purely due to the more balanced and complex nature of it. But we did say that those citrus and herbal elements, if that was what you were looking for in a gin, then potentially looking at that younger spirit might be what you would want to look at. 
Um, so I'm just going to do it by hands. Hands, if you agree, roughly. Yeah? Good majority. Anyone disagree? Anyone think I'm just making this up as I go? <laughs> cool, yeah, so that's nice. Nice to see that that maps onto the panel as well. I should have said, obviously, the panel is made up of our distilling team. Um, so these are people that are working with these spirits day in, day out, so very much trained assessors here. They know what it is they're looking for. They know what's going into the spirit. So it might be an interesting thing if we were to redo this with almost an untrained panel, you know, consumer-like um, approach. So hopefully that's given you all time to try both of those. So if we were to move on to the second set, so samples three and four. So this time we're not looking at resting, but we're actually looking at the dilution itself. So both of these have sat at that high strength for 14 days. But what we've done is um, we've either immediately proofed them down to bottling strength. So on day 14, it was completely down from 90% to 40%. Or we've very slowly done it over the course of the 14 days. So a little bit of water added each day. So a slow proofing versus an immediate proofing. Um, so sample three is the slow proof. And uh, sample four is the fast proof. Um, Basically, what we found there is actually angelic and floral notes tended to be the difference that the panel picked out here. So on sample three, on the nose, we found that, yeah, those angelica and sort of lavender rose was really leaping out at the panel is a bit different. Um, but apart from that, they basically said it was very standard to what the gin had been in the previous samples. So juniper, coriander, cinnamon, typical gin elements to it. Uh, when it came to the palette, sample three, they again fed back was smoother this time. Um, so we kind of link that back to maybe that like gentler dilution factors allowed the palate to sort of settle out a bit more and be a little bit less harsh. Um, we've got stronger earthy and herbal notes with Angelica and Lem Verbena being the two that were picked out here as shining a lot more. Versus sample four, so this is the fast proof, um, very much fed back as being a cleaner and lighter spirit. And actually out of all the samples today, these were the two that were said to be the most different. Um, we just got a lot less intensity on sample four, um, but it did allow in that intensity for floral, orange, rose, and toasted wood to shine through a lot more on the nose. Um, and then when it came to the palette, again, similar to the first set there, we found much spicier, much more rounded um, spirit with longer finishes and bigger spicy peaks, um, as well as a lot more herbal character as well. So again, I will ask, agree, roughly? Oh, a lot less that time. Disagree then. Did anyone try them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so sorry, just general overall feedback. So sort of saying that sample three was more angelic and floral forward, and um, a little bit smoother on the palate, whereas sample four was a lot lighter and a lot cleaner, less intense spirit. Yeah, I've seen some nodding in the room. So again, depending on how you would want to take that forward, if you were to apply it to your own products, not to say that one way is better than the other, but maybe if you were looking for a sort of lighter, more citrusy, more floral spirit, then the fast proofing might be the way for you, versus if you wanted a lot more of that sort of spiciness, angelicness to it, um, you know, a lot more in the palate, then potentially a slow proof might be the way to go. So then moving on to our final set, so samples five and six. So what we've done this time is we've actually looked at the filtration before bottling, um, a step in the process that I think goes um, overlooked quite often. So under salsa regulations, um, and as a, when I get to my summary, you'll see that quite a lot of people operate at 50 micron, and um, that tends to be what a lot of people, you know, that's all they have to do. They don't want to be stripping out too much flavour, so they'll pass it through 50. So um, your sample five has been filtered at 50 microns versus your sample six, which has been filtered at five micron. Um, and we've just chosen for those because that's what we work with is the five micron but again we um, and when I get onto my GC results I'll show you that we've taken that step further as well um, so overall actually in the terms of comparing them this was the one the panel fed back the least amount of difference so for sample five filtered at 50 microns they said yeah very very typical of what they expected of the gin you know everything coming through juniper coriander cinnamon um, yeah, just pretty balanced spirit. They did say that it was slightly perfumed, a bit floral, a little bit green and earthy, but nothing overly drastic. And again, very similar feedback on the palate, just a little bit of earthiness coming through. Versus sample six, which again, they've not found much difference, but they did find it to be a cleaner spirit, more woody, earthy characters, but the palate seems to be where this has made the most difference. 
and actually we got a lot more feedback on fruity notes, fruity and citrus, so orange, marmalade, um, lemon, rose, that kind of thing was picked up a lot more on the palette when it was filtered at the smaller filter size. Um, and now I'm going to show you some science. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you very much to Anne Brock and Pamela Robertson, who actually did all the hard work for this, not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to go through, we've got um, a couple of key flavour compounds that have come out of these. So you'll see that we've obviously got an unfiltered, um, which actually is the 50 micron filter, slightly mislabeling on my part there. We've got the 5 micron filter, and then we've taken it a step further to go all the way down to 0.1. So hopefully you can see that it's quite a pretty standard flow of um, compounds there and how they're behaving. Everything is getting you know, pretty much stripped out the more and more filtering it goes through. So everything here on this slide, um, obviously the way GC works is we're going to be working along a retention time, so these are your very volatile characteristics coming through. So your pinings there giving you a lot of your fresh, piney, woody, citrusy flavours. Um, the sabonine as well, adding a bit of spice along with the myrcene. Um, myrcene itself can also be quite vegetal and plastic. So again, this isn't to say that filtering is stripping out everything good. There might actually be things that you're taking out that might be hindering your spirit or masking something else. And when I was talking about the flavour notes, we did obviously say that things like you know more floral perfume notes, which might be related to say linalool kind of flavour compounds, might actually be coming through a lot nicer with that filtration step. Um, limonene, fairly well known one, that citrus, losing that a little bit, um, eucalyptal, sort of minty, herbal and medicinal, um, goes right off the spectrum there but it does follow a similar run as the rest of them. Um, your gamma terpenine, again just oily, woody, piney, typical piney flavours, um, parasimine, fresh, citrus and spicy, so overall quite similar flavours coming through at the volatile stage here, um, but we do see an overall decrease in most of what we would typically say to be typical flavours in gin. I move on, so this is the same spectrum, we've just moved along further in the retention time, so starting to get less volatile as we go along now. Um, so again, you can see they're not labelled here, but you can see a lot of those peaks, actually we don't see a huge amount of difference, so these won't be affected much at all by the filtration process. But you can see that there's two of them there that have been pulled out, and these ones are typically quite herbal, waxy and woody, so we're seeing reduction in those. And then if we move again along of the retention time, you can see a, a very similar, it gets quite repetitive, this GC graph, but yeah, just general reductions. So again, woody, spicy, earthy flavourings there being reduced by filtration. And to finish us off, again, you can see that we have got um, sort of a reminiscent of sort of clove and nuttiness in those compounds there has been reduced. Um, so yeah, it's a very common theme. We're seeing, um, you know, with the filtration process, it's quite common sense. We're going to be stripping things out the smaller that you go. But that's not to say, you know, if I go back, that might be finding a sort of medium in between here might be what you need for your gin, you know. And I definitely think this is something worth investigating. And it's something that our operations team hate me for because I'm constantly trying to change things and change the process. But the differences we see um, by doing that personally are what I think leads us to be able to put things out on the market that we truly believe are at the best stage they could be at. And then just to finish off, I was going to say I was going to show you um, what distilleries had kindly shared with us. So this is a bit of a summary of uh, 17 distilleries sort of dotted about, I'm not naming anybody, but a sort of summary of what they've done for all three of the processes I've talked about. So if we go through the filtration there, as I said, you can see a lot of people are up at the 50 microns, so stripping out very little. Um, but you can see that some people are getting right down, you know, sort of five microns, the point one that we looked at as well on the GC. Um, so, you know, they clearly must have been doing that for a reason. Um, the resting time, again, quite a variety here. Um, and you can see, and I think people are quite, like I was saying at the start, quite defensive of their methods and what it is they're trying to get out of them. Um, for me, I, and it's shown sort of throughout the sensory tasting notes, spice is pretty much for me the big thing there when it comes to resting time. I very much build our recipes around how I want a spice character to come through. Um, so you can see that, I mean, I think minimum we've got is a few days there all the way up to months. So huge difference there between distilleries. Um, and then when we come on to proofing, 
again, you can see that some people have got their, you know, gradual proofing, we take our time. People very passionate about what they're doing and, you know, really believe in their process. Um, I've got a lot of people that don't do it at all. Um, again, our production team would probably kill me if I told them they had to add a small amount of water every day to an IBC. Um, so, you know, that quality first is always the flag that I wave. But we, we feel personally that we don't need it. We, we dilute all in one go, but you can see that other people do not. Um, and then, yeah, just to show the ABV range of the gins and where they have come from. And that, that was very fast. <laughs> So yeah, short and sweet. Um, but thank you so much for tasting, and I'm glad to see that you agreed with what the panel said. Um, thank you very much.